when you understand the things of god then you begin to see a lot of profit when you understand the word what it means to you as a believer and to a church in general you begin to benefit when you don't know you perish government first is rule first is interest first we can know the interest of god from the written word we can know what is putting first we thank god for this christmas day 2022 and we thank god because the future is very bright for you praise god God kept revealing to me several things, reminding me about several, thi several things after the prophetic word he gave me. I want to tell you, this year is ending for you in a great way. And you have received the word that will take you through. Praise God. The other day, God was revealing to me that he has released grace upon your life. Grace for change. And you will see that change. It's going to be a speedy change. Praise God. Let me tell you, church, there are things that only God can do. That's why sometimes nations struggle and struggle and struggle and they cannot change until God intervenes. Then things begin to that fall apart that has been holding that nation. A family your own personal life at every level you are going to see change in jesus name we are we are looking at the supreme king today's message you see christmas is about celebrating a king really the supreme king the supreme king the word supreme means the highest the highest king you see church when you sit back and you look at what God has done for you as a person. It's a very serious thing. It's a very serious thing. It is, it is, it is, it is, it makes you so, so grateful that you may not be even able to express it. For God to give us his son. Now let's look at what the word says. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 to 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from the time on, from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. In, uh, in message by translation, he said, For a child has been born for us. The gift of a son for us. He'll take over the running of the world. You see? He'll take over the running of the world. You see, as a believer, don't remove your eyes from Jesus. Never. Because he has the supreme authority. He's the supreme king. Believe him completely and repeat what he has said in your heart and through your mouth. Repeat it. Meditate upon it. Because that's where change comes from. He'll take over the running of the world. This plan was a long plan from Abraham. Then when Jacob was dying, he gave a prophecy over uh, Judah. He said, you will rule Judah. But you see, he was talking about temporary rule. Rulers will come out of the house of David. You will rule. The ruler's staff will be between your, your, your feet. 
You find that in Genesis 49. Until the one to whom it belongs comes, the Messiah. It was talking about Jesus. Nobody, don't let the devil deceive you. Nobody's running the world. It is God that has the last word in this world. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes people start a problem that they fail to stop it. You have seen in nations. They start a war that they fail to stop. God around allows them to struggle, to struggle, to struggle. Until out of his mercy he said, okay, stop. I'm stopping this. And then change comes. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes people make problems. They think uh, they're in charge of their workplace, of their lives. When actually they're not in charge. Then God said, okay, let's see whether you're in charge. Let's see. The good thing is, is a merciful God. Amen. Praise God. So when the, the children, the descendant of David messed, God, God gave them 20 years to repent. 20. You see, God is merciful. Sometimes when you read the Old Testament, you think he's, he's not merciful. Like in the New Testament. He's the same God. But 20 years. Sending, he sent Isaiah to them. He sent Jeremiah to them. He sent Ezekiel to them. He sent Hosea to them. He sent so many prophets. Turn back to me. Turn. 20 years. Then he said, okay, no one will sit on that chair again. Nobody. Until Christ comes. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Until Christ comes. So that's how the prophecy came to Mary that will produce a child. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. Because what God did, he carried away those people in exile. Assyrians came. Uh, 130 years before Nebuchadnezzar from Babylon came. They took away another, the 10 tribes. They are, up to today, they are known as the, the lost tribes. But they came back in 1948 to, to Israel when God said in one day a nation will be born. And Israel was born in one day. They declared independence and people began to come back. The Jews began to come back. Praise God. That was also fulfilled by Isaiah. Isaiah said you will be carried away but I will bring you. Have you ever heard of a country being born in one day? Yeah? No, but it will happen. <laughs> That's how Israel came about because of also his covenant with David. Praise God. But the good news, the Messiah came. Our king came. Our supreme king came. And that should be hope for you. That should be joy for you. Don't let anything disturb you. Praise God. Don't let anything worry you. Take it to him by prayer. Take it to him. Follow his principles. Let me tell you. There's no failure in this room. There's no failure in the church of Christ. No. You can never fail. After what the Lord has done. He's the one running the government. You are a priest and a king. You are, you are ruling with him. You know, you know why Christ came? He came to connect us back to God. Eventually through that sacrifice he made on the cross to connect you back. Why do you need to be connected back to God? So that you can take charge for, of the earth. You can rule for him. You can rule for him. You can have dominion for him. You can have dominion. God wants you to rule for him. And that's why when Jesus came and began to preach, he said, the kingdom of God, the government of God, is within your reach. Change your mind about what you have been told. About the way you have taken life. Believe what I want to do for you. Believe what I'm saying. Believe. And receive the good news about the kingdom. I want you to rule for me. Manage for me. Manage for me the earth. Make it better. That was my original plan with Adam, but the devil spoiled it. So I sent my son to pay for that sin. Connect you back to me because I'm the source of your life. I'm the source of your grace. I'm the source of your help. That's why we need to connect. Blessings flow from me. 
That's why we need to connect to him. And the factor that will make you succeed in this life is the blessing. Praise God. Is the blessing. Christ became a, became a curse. So that the blessing that God promised Abraham can come to you. The blessing causes you to succeed where God has placed you. Praise God. Amen. Causes you to prevail. And the covenant is a contract for ensuring that the blessing comes to you. It's a vehicle of dispensing the blessing. That's what the covenant is. The old covenant and the new covenant. The new covenant is superior to the old. Because in the new covenant, curses are dealt with effectively. And you need to know about it so that you can declare it over your life. That look, I will not accept any curse from my father's root, from my mother's root. I will not accept it. Don't allow sickness to bog you down. When sickness begins to manifest, say no. It took away my infirmity and removed my diseases. Because we are told here, the prince of wholeness, your life must be whole, complete, nothing missing. Praise God. Nothing broken. Disease cannot break your body. Nothing missing, nothing is broken. Shalom, peace. Praise God. Eternal Father. Eternal Father. You know the word Father in Hebrews means source. And that's why even a good father at home is a source for the family. Praise God. Source of support. So, is our source. Is our source. You don't need to covet anything from anybody. You don't need to be jealous about anybody. If you are a child of God, you are born again, you have made Christ your Lord and Savior, you don't need to. Your portion is there. Amen. You see, sometimes when you are jealous of others, you keep looking at others, you have not understood what God has for you. Yes. If you understand it, you have no time. There's too much to do, there's too much to get. Amen. The, I'm telling you... <laughs> Too much to do. Tell your neighbor, you have too much to do. Eternal Father, Prince of Wholeness. His ruling authority will grow. And there will be no limit to the wholeness he brings. No limit. No limit. You see, one of the things that makes me rejoice about Jesus, that should make you focus on him and really rejoice about him, is unlimited. Nothing can stop him. So you need him. You look at him. Look at him. So when you allow him to walk with you, nothing can stop you. He's in charge of running the world. Sometimes, not only running the world, the entire universe. You can imagine that the world is just a speck in the universe, like, like a speck of sun. Have you gone to the lake shore where there's a lot of sun, maybe in the beach? Imagine planet Earth. Just remove one sun. Just one. When you go to Entebbe Beach, just one sun. Put it on your hand. This planet Earth, compared to the universe, is like that. It is mind-boggling. That's the kind of savior. He's the one who created all that. Ask yourself whether he cannot create for you a new heart. He can create for you a new heart. He can create for you a job. He can create for you a good business. He can create for you children. He is in charge running. He does not do counterfeiting. He will not create for you money. But let me tell you, is in charge. Money belongs to him. Amen. But when you use the principles he gives you, money will flow and come into your hands. Amen. Because he's the owner. He's the owner. He'll rule from the historic David throne over that promised kingdom. The, the, now he's talking about the promise God made about the Messiah. To David, 
he made, he said, the ruler of the world will come. The savior of the world will come. But I, I will use your family line. He'll put that kingdom on firm footing and keep it going with fair dealings and right living. Justice and righteousness. Fair dealing. Our king is a just God. He's a just king. He rules with fair dealing. He deals with people fairly. And he desires right living. Righteousness is right living. Seek first his kingdom, his government, and right living. And the rest that we will, the world is running after will come. <laughs> right living. Forgive those ones who have hurt you. You don't need to hold them. Because if you hold them in what, it is like you are living in the past. You are, you are now not moving forward. You are stuck in the past. You are stuck there. Imagine if someone hurt you five years ago and you have not forgiven the person, you are stuck, five, you are back there five years ago. So you cannot go forward. God's grace will not work. You let them go so that you can look forward where God is taking you. God is saying, look, I have something better for you here. Look, 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 I have something better for you. With you, you are looking, oh, the other... How could she do this? How can he do this? How? You are there. God is saying, look, there, that's where I'm taking you. You say, no, no, I'm still remembering what this one is. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> right living. When you forgive, you are doing right. Praise God. Why? Because he forgave you also. <laughs> It doesn't do double. There's, there's, the kingdom doesn't have a double standard. We have one standard. Praise God. Let me tell you, stop making the word of God a common thing. Some people become used to it. Some people become used to it. Praise God. They become used maybe to the prophetic word so that it becomes useless for them. When you become used to everything God tells you, become used to the word of God, it will not work for you. But when you take it and you look at it as a word that brings life, because Jesus said the word I speak, is spirit and brings life. Praise God. It's very, very important. Now let's look at Matthew chapter 2, verse number 1 to 6. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the, peop the, the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them, where the Christ was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will be a shepherd of my people Israel. Just look at this. People from the east were able to see that something has happened in Israel. They came looking for that baby. You can imagine. They came looking for the baby. That king, that supreme king. Really, the big picture for us in Christianity is the kingdom. And our king is Jesus. It's the kingdom. Whatever you are doing, even in your family, you are advancing the kingdom there. If you teach your children the word of God, you bring them to church, you are advancing the kingdom in your family. If you use biblical principle in your marriage, you are advancing the kingdom. If you use the principle taught in the word of God in your workplace, you are advancing the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. It's about the kingdom. Praise God. It's about the kingdom. People are watching you. They want to be, they want to see whether the th things are, are uh, the way you live. They admire. 
there are things people are struggling with. Like what the prophetic word gave us, the, the Lord gave us, tells us. More grace that will release you out of bondage to sin. Praise God. Hmm? Not that the grace has not been there. Grace has not been, uh, has been there. The grace of God that saves us and helps us to say no to the power of sin. Is there available? But you see, there are certain seasons that God opens the eyes of people to see what they have not been seeing. And so that deliverance comes. So that deliverance comes. So, we have to focus on the kingdom. The kingdom has all it takes to liberate you. You must advance it. You must advance the kingdom of our king. Praise God. King Herod was disturbed. You need to know that Jesus came as a king. That's why this other earthly king was disturbed. He thought he was coming as a limited king, like the king of the earth. They live and die. But the kingdom of Jesus is forever. He's there. He's available all the time. Praise God. We must advance the kingdom of our king. He's supreme. He's supreme. He's supreme. Whatever God wants to do in Uganda, don't miss it. Because you have the word. Don't miss it. Amen. Take it. Prepare. Be expectant. When people are expecting the worst, don't expect the worst. Don't. Because you have work to do. You have the kingdom to advance. You cannot even afford to be poor. You cannot. You cannot afford to lack. You cannot afford to think like people who have no idea about the kingdom of God, the existence of the kingdom of God. People, don't, religion cannot make you see it. But salvation can make you see it. Praise God. Amen. I want to tell you, church, don't let anything stop you from seeing where God is taking you. Amen. Don't. You must maintain a sense of destiny. A direction. Expectation. Because you are in a kingdom, because you have a ruler. You have to maintain a sense of destiny. Psalms 8 and 9 verse 14. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Love and faithfulness go before you. God has loved us. So he's going to be faithful to his word. Because he has loved you. Because of his love. And because he's faithful to his word. He'll ensure that the right thing happens to you. Praise God. Lift up your hands. Talk to the Lord. Thank him. Thank him for Jesus. Thank him for Jesus. Father, we want to thank you for your son. Father, we want to thank you for your son. Father, we want to thank you for your son. Father, we want to thank you for your son. Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you glory. Father, we give you honor. He is in charge. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you as a church. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are wonderful. You are mighty. We bless your name, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise.